In a slow news week, Google livened things up by handing out the Nexus One to some of its employees, a new touchscreen phone that happens to run Android 2.1. There's no doubt how fast development is continuing at the Big G on the core of Android. Specs are high-end with a 3.7-inch screen and a resolution of 854 by 480 pixels, the same as the Motorola Droid. The battery is the same too at 1400 mAh. The next question is whether the OLED screened Nexus One itself will appear for sale to the public. Early reports are yes, in January sold unlocked and direct, effectively how Nokia smartphones have been for years in the USA, though doubtless to more success here. Uh, a subsidised version should also appear via T-Mobile in the States. Do you fancy meeting me and a batch of other phone show enthusiasts next month? Will you be near Berkshire in the UK on January the 6th, 2010? It's all free, even the beer. If you can make the effort to come along, I'll make the effort to get the drinks in. At first sight, the Nokia E72 seems to be almost identical to its forebearer. The rather excellent for its time E71. You know the drill. Miniature QWERTY thumb keyboard, small landscape screen, candy bar robustness nice metal back and a huge 1500 milliamp hour battery. What's somewhat surprising is the list of improvements. A 5 megapixel camera, the E71's was 3 megapixels, and quite a good one too. Here are some of the results. Definitely the best camera ever fitted to a Nokia E series. Uh, video is now VGA resolution too. There are an extra two keys on the keyboard uh, here, allowing extra characters and also a torch option. You press and hold the space bar on the home screen and after three seconds, on comes a torch. Very handy. The processor has almost doubled now to 600 megahertz with the result that the device zips along in almost all tasks. There are no lags whatsoever. There's a gimmicky optical navi key, as Nokia calls it, in the centre of the D-pad. It's meant for more intuitive navigation in web, but in my test it was a lot quicker to just use the main D-pad. Uh, the navi key is also used in the camera app. Um, for initiating focusing. This is very sensitive. I ended up focusing before I meant to a lot of the time. Again, the whole idea is just gimmicky. There's a 3.5 millimeter jack for audio on the top at last, hooray. This really is becoming a standard in all phones now. There are extra gadgets, a digital compass, an accelerometer, micro USB charging here on the side, as well as two millimeter charging here on the bottom, as on the E75. Active noise cancellation for calls, track loads of extra free flash memory on disk C, high speed USB data and so on, all backed up by an OS upgrade to third edition feature pack 2, bringing user data preservation, over the air firmware updates, intelligent destinations and Maps 3. That's quite a list making the E72 in theory a must have upgrade from the E71 and a pretty compelling messaging device for everybody else. Sadly, a tweet I read recently is rather borne out in the E72. It was along the lines of, will someone please take Nokia's gun away before it shoots itself in the foot yet again? You see, and I speak as a long-term Nokia fan, it just can't seem to ship a smartphone without a major gotcha these days. In the case of the E72, it's the omission of podcasting, just about my most used S60 application and one of S60's crown jewels, in my opinion. You probably love it too if you're watching this podcast. Podcasting was also missing, again for no technical reason whatsoever, on the E52 and E55, you may remember. So it's safe to say that it's a, a misguided marketing decision. Nokia, if you can't stick podcasting in the firmware, at least let us download it separately. In the meantime, see this quirky third-party podcatcher, Escarpod. Uh, in addition, this being a Nokia smartphone, there are all the usual early firmware glitches from buggy Nokia messaging. Hey, there are three words that kind of go together. I still can't get on with it. To keyboard driver oddities, to Bluetooth bugs. As I've said before, buying a smartphone is sadly an investment and you have to be prepared to be patient for software updates that fix those niggles. Hey, if you want something really stable, buy something from a year or so ago. In terms of applications and podcasting aside, there are a full set, including the editing versions of Quick Office, plus a number of business focused licensed third-party tools, Y Presenter, Font Magnifier, Multiscanner, Adobe PDF Viewer, and so on. Uh, it's fair to say that the E72 has the potential to be a far, far better smartphone than the 10 million selling E71. But as with some other recent phone releases, so much depends on how well it's supported in terms of firmware fixes and updates. If you lust after this form factor, then go ahead and buy. After a few updates, you'll doubtless be quite happy. But if you're still playing the market, then you can afford to wait and see what Nokia actually do with this in terms of firmware. This is the E72. It's Christmas Eve. Outside, the snow lies on the ground. Nothing is stirring. 
inside their homes, the people of the world were instant messaging on their smartphones, of course. Outside, the birds were twittering in the trees. Inside, people were twittering in their instant message client on their smartphones. What I'd like to do today is just to highlight a particular application favourite of mine, Nimbus, uh, who added a major new uh, leap in functionality. Nimbus is basically totally free, totally cross-platform, a chat, calling, messaging, file sending service that also now has Twitter, which I'll come to in a moment. Uh, you can use it with Skype, MSN, Yahoo, Google Talk, and many more. And you can buy Nimbus out credits if you want to not only make free calls across the world to other Nimbus users, but actually call traditional mobiles and landlines and uh, looked at the rates. And it's actually quite cheap. It's quite a bit cheaper than using a traditional phone. So uh, recommendation there, but let's move on to the, the, the new functionality. So most of these screens should be familiar to you. This is browsing on a Nokia N97, by the way. First of all, your instant messaging contacts from the various networks and your chats with the same people. There's a phone book, um, which you can also back up to Nimbus servers, and you can message and send files to those different people. Now we're into the Twitter module. This is the new bit. Model, I have to say, a bit after Gravity, the Symbian Twitter client, but I'm not complaining. This is all free functionality built into, into Nimbus. Uh, here we're browsing through the main timeline, all the people I follow and their thumbnails and what they've been saying. And if you tap on any tweet, you can get all different options that you'd expect in terms of replying, reposting, open the different links. Um, as you scroll right through mentions of yourself, wherever on Twitter, you can see what people are saying about you and to you. And then if I tap on the arrow again, you get to direct messages between people who follow you. And then we're into trending topics, which are the hashtags and the keywords that people are using and tweeting all around the internet. So you can then delve into that. This is shown in real time, refreshing a Twitter search for those topics. And you can see exactly what people are saying to find out the latest breaking news and gossip. So there you go, tweeting using Nimbus. And one other final point of recommendation, unlike some other calling and chat systems on smartphones, Nimbus doesn't insist on running all the time. You can simply run it up when you want to and close it down when you want to, knowing that it's not going to be using up your precious data on some roaming agreement. So Nimbus, give it a try. Hi, my name's Mark and I'm in Dallas, Texas. I've been in the mobile industry for about 10 years. It all started when an old boss of mine gave me a Palm Pilot. From there, I upgraded to a Palm Trio. Getting tired of spending $600 on devices, I jumped onto Windows Mobile with the T-Mobile SDA. Upgraded from there to the T-Mobile Shadow, but got wore out with this five, six minute reboot times of Windows Mobile, so I needed something different. BlackBerry really wasn't for me, and I didn't want to jump on the iPhone bandwagon even though I love my iPod Touch. So what was left? Symbian. I was in a Nokia store in Chicago and I saw the E51 and I loved it. it was sleek, stylish, powerful, strong. What could be better? Symbian. Nokia E51. That's my device. It's winter here in the UK, it's covered in snow and it's going to be a white Christmas. Uh, thanks if you've been supporting me in 2009 by email, by finance. I hope you have a very happy Christmas and a prosperous new year. Bye for now.